In this Photoshop design tutorial, I'll be showing you how to design a simple photography logo in Photoshop. So, hi guys, and welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this super simple photography logo here. So, recently, a guy approached me, a client of mine now, and asked me to do a simple photography logo for him. He's a wedding photographer, and his name is Yaku, and he called himself Yaku Photography, but over the years changed over to Photo Yaku. So, again, he wants to have a new logo and a little bit of a different brand design, so that's what I did for him as you guys can see here. So everything targeted towards wedding photography, obviously having a camera again in the shot and also changing the name around to something simple like Photo Yaku, the photographer. Great, so let's also get right away into it. I want to show you guys how I went about this project and how did I start with this. Okay, so first of all, we're going to concentrate again on the background today. So again, over here we have a shot here, just a wedding shot, which I pulled from Google quickly. It's not one of his work at the moment, but just an image here from Google. So basically what this means now is I'm going to use this just for the tutorial purposes here just as a background so it looks a little bit nicer. Normally when I submit this stuff to the client it might just look something like this where you just have it simply on a black background but yeah for the tutorial again with this background. Okay so let's also get right away into it. First of all the background here what I want to do with it is turn it right away to a black and white image. You want to know what background I've used? You want to download my PSD design, shapes or brush files? Or you just want to improve on your Photoshop design skills? Then my 101 Photoshop design course is for you. This course includes 101 for beginner designers. Learn and design your own custom designs. All work materials are provided such as PSD, shapes and brush files, all ready for you to download and practice on. Over 60 lessons and all future updates are for free. If this course is for you, then simply click on the little info button on the right hand side, select the design course and receive a reduced $10 entry today. So first of all, what we're going to do is create a new group. I'm going to go down here and create the group icon and I'm just going to rename this to background. So just our uh, PSD file is a bit more sorted here. I'm going to move that into there and this down here and we know turn all of this off and we can start from scratch here just with our background image. So first of all I want to go to the adjustment layers here and turn that to a hue and saturation adjustment layer and just turn the uh, color down here all the way. So saturation all the way down so we have a black and white image looks really cool so far and this is obviously not a tutorial about retouching the background we want to design the logo. So again, also we have background, it's still pretty light. Maybe I actually want to darken this a bit. So I'm just going to create a new empty layer down here. Drag it all the way to the bottom. It's going to take the marking tool, hit right leg, select the rectangular marking tool. And I'm just going to select the whole canvas. Hit right leg and say fill this up with a black color here. Again under content, select black, OK. I'm going to hit Command D on the keyboard. I'm working with a Mac. If you're a Windows person, please press Control when I say Command. So for you now, Control D. For me, Command D. Getting out of the selection, and right away we have a back background layer in the back, as you guys can see. So I'm going to switch back to the background image here and just take the opacity down a little bit. Something like so, because our logo will be in white now, so it will just stand out a little bit nicer. So this is just a small section here of showing you guys how to do it with the background. It's not really part of the tutorial purposes for creating a logo. Okay, so the first thing that I actually did is I went ahead and just sketched something up really quickly. Um, and that was my main idea for starting with this project. So again, this is a, what I want to replicate as well. So if you have a certain idea, maybe draw it down and then with the pen tool, you're just recreating this in Photoshop again. Okay, so what I want to do is first of all, scale this down a little bit. It's a way too big for me now. So I'm going to press Command T on the keyboard. Again, Windows people, please press Control. I'm going to hold Shift now on the keyboard. So it's equally uh, decreasing here and I'm just going to take an anchor point and make this a little bit smaller, something like so. Okay, I'm going to accept it, take the move tool and literally just move that into the center. So I want to replicate now just this image here, the icon actually, the logo itself. So I'm going to go to the top 
and select from the rulers here again a guideline move that all the way down to the bottom gonna drop it over here and again another one and I'm doing this a bit quicker you can if you want maybe calculate these steps here a little bit better um, the distances not like me just doing it quickly quickly okay I'm gonna go all the way down and a little bit more and just like so and I'm just creating more guidelines here so I have a bit of a better anchor points when I'm going with my pen tool okay something like this as well and I'm going to take another one, place that over here on all the corners, as you guys can see, and another one over here. So again, guys, I'm replicating this quite quickly. It might look a little bit different the next time around, but obviously it's a, it's a quick tutorial here. Okay, so we've created guidelines now, so I want to replicate exactly this area here from our logo. Okay, so let's start right away just with going to the pen tool. Select the pen tool and start working with the pen tool and placing anchor points here. Now also, if you're not familiar with the pen tool, have a look on the channel. I've created another tutorial teaching you how to work with the pen tool. So, completed the anchor points and we have a nice path over here. If you want to have a look quickly, there you guys can see the path now. Again, I'm going to hit right click into that path and say make a selection. Select zero feathering so the edges are really nice and sharp. And first of all, we're going to create a new empty layer now. So down here, create a new empty layer. Hit right click. Well, first of all, we need to select the marking tool. And now inside of the selection, hit right click and say fill again. This time we're going to fill it up with white contents. OK. And now we can press Command D to get out of the selection. So we start right away out just with our shape here on the left side. Again, I don't want to completely do this process again on the right hand side, so I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Pressing Command J, duplicate that, and now we just need to flip that. So we're going to go to Edit. Remember, we've already selected the layer, right? So go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontally. Okay, that has happened. We're going to take the Move tool and just literally move that over a little bit. So I designed it to be somewhere over here, but I think I need to have a bit more space in order for me to also get a round circle in here. Okay, so that is a bit of a playing thing now. So obviously my sketch here in the background is just a little bit of a help layer, so I can find things a bit quicker and easier. I'm going to turn it off again, and actually going to move up all my logo here to just see if I'm pretty much in the same direction or if I'm far too far out. So again, I'm going to take my move layers here, and just you guys can see that it's a bit smaller from the previous one and again this one over here also placing it over here so it's a bit too big let's take both of these layers here press command T and I'm gonna just make them a bit smaller so obviously you guys don't have that now right you are doing this logo for the first time so it's a bit of a tricky thing you have to play a little bit with this until it's right okay I'm gonna turn this off again so we're not distracted here and we ba you basically can see that I've just made these a bit smaller now. I'm also going to go to view and clear the guides again and I've just got these two brackets in a way. Now what I want to do is go back to the marking tool over here and select the elliptic in marking tool. Now I'm going to make a selection here just keep on holding shift so your circle is equally expanding and I'm making this a bit bigger and like something like so and dropping it and now what I did pay attention to is just literally the top edge here and the bottom edge here so that the circle touches both of these. Okay, on a new layer, I'm just going to select a new layer again and hit right click, fill, and we're going to fill this up again with white and press Command D, get out of the selection. Now, first of all, with the Move tool, again moving this over a little bit. Great, so it can be somewhere over here, that looks all right. And I think I'm going to move these left brackets still a little bit out. So just with my cursors, left and right, I'm just spacing them a bit. Taking in layer 12, which is now the circle, and moving that a bit into the center. So obviously I'm replicating this quite quickly. I do take a bit more time when I do this for the first time. Okay, so I'm also going to take now another guideline. Place it right over here and over here. And maybe now I'm going to take another guideline and just go a little bit deeper in. Something like so. I'm just having a look at the thickness here. That's supposed to be now the inner, the inner circle here. So maybe a little bit more. You guys can also again calculate this obviously with your ruler. I'm being a bit lazy and just doing it quickly. Okay, let's maybe take this guideline. Put that somewhere in here. 
just as a quick reference we can have a look in a moment. Now again with the elliptic and marking tool again hold shift on the keyboard and just select this so it's equally expanding okay like so and now I'm just going to place that into the center again so obviously the guidelines don't help that much at the moment okay and on layer 12 I'm going to hit delete again maybe press command D get out of the selection and as well go to view clear the guides and I'm just zooming out a little bit and I can see already it's a little bit too small still so again M on the keyboard back again to the elliptic and marking tool hold shift again I'm gonna go somewhere over here you guys are also welcome again to create some more guidelines I'm just gonna try to make this selection a bit bigger okay also moving the selection again and it's still too small so now I've already created the selection I'm too lazy to create another one so let's simply do this we're gonna hit right click and just say here transform selection okay and now hold shift again and just take an anchor point and just make it a bit bigger until you are happy with it okay S accept it from the top again press V on the keyboard so you get it back into the move tool nope I'm sorry that was a mistake press M on the keyboard so you stay in the marking tool and now just with your cursors move that around a bit okay and hit delete command D out of the selection okay so it looks, looks a little bit bigger than it's supposed to let's have a look here at the before and after again so the before is a little bit smaller there actually but anyways you guys get the point okay let's zoom out of this again and next step that I want to do is take another guideline again here from the top and maybe just again one from on the side here and let's go with this corner actually okay let's zoom in with Z a little bit I'm gonna take the move tool place the corner right here and again another guideline here from the side and maybe stop that right over with this corner and then from the top yeah somewhere over here that's our thickness okay new layer again pen tool and just place four anchor points and complete the path hit right click make a selection zero feathering again and again select the marking tool right click inside of the selection again and fill it up with white as well okay command D get out of the selection and there you go we've created a super quick camera now clear the guides and it looks a bit weird looks a little bit different than my previous one but again you guys get the point it's just trying to replicate this super quickly again I'm gonna take all of these layers here which are now just the camera itself and I'm gonna place them together in a group so pressing command G while I've selected all of them and I'm just gonna write here cam okay great so that's my first step now for creating just the camera obviously it's not perfect I would most probably sit now and refine this a little bit but yeah showing you guys how to create this quickly then again I'm gonna go to the text tool and also obviously place a bit of branding now the company name the slogan whatever underneath of the logo so again I'm gonna make a big selection here and his name is now photo yaku so we're gonna start out with photo yaku typing all of that and we have selected the wrong font and everything is too small so we're gonna change that first of all so today I'm gonna to work with a font called intro you guys can also find that again in the description down below okay so first of all photo yaku and intro font I'm gonna go and select a white foreground color yes so the font should be white size I think somewhere around 20 to 26 so look yeah that's quite good but the tracking is way out of proportion so under my character box here on the right hand side also if you guys don't have the character box please go to window and just select character box over here so under the character box my tracking here is way too far up so I need to turn that down a bit maybe something like a hundred so have a look yeah maybe let's place that a bit further out so I'm gonna go with 200 maybe even a little bit more 240 looks actually pretty good okay accept that take the move tool again and we're just going to place it somewhere here into the center again also if you guys want you can always go to view new guides I show this in every tutorial actually and you can create a new guide at 50 percent so you right in the center of your canvas again for vertical or horizontally I'm gonna go for horizontally and just type in here 50 percent okay and I know right there and again another one new guide and vertically as well 50 percent okay and my O is maybe not completely in the center so let's maybe do that a bit more and as well the camera here 
I'm also going to move that a bit into the center. Great. Again, let's go to view, clear the guides, a bit distracting for me. Now, next thing that I want to do is again create some text. This is now the slogan because obviously people will be recognizing this as the photo yaku guy. So what is he, a video guy? Is he a director whatever? No, he's a photographer. So again, I'm going to make a big selection here just with the text tool and I'm going to write photographer. Okay, photographer, there we go. I'm going to select all of it again. And as you guys can see, we still have the same font. So now I'm going to change things around a little bit. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and a little bit subtle in the whole design. So it's not too distracting. You obviously want to know the company name and the slogan is just has to be like a silent thing there. So again, I'm going to go to a different font and we're going to work again with Halfitica Neue. It's over here. You guys can also find it again in the description down below. Halfitka Neue and I'm going to go with light I think because it's just a little bit lighter then and not too thick. So the light mode and let's go with the previous one which was 7 pixels so super small. 8 might also work actually. Yeah, I'm more a fan of 7. Okay so 7 pixels then as well a white foreground color okay but I want to push the tracking all the way up. Again back to the previous one which was 1800. Okay, I'm going to accept it and take the move tool and you guys can see this will obviously be a bit different towards your size so play with this. I was looking at that it's not extending here from the P or the O. Okay, so the tracking is not extending over that. So again you can also place it a little bit closer, a little bit further away, that totally depends on you. So photog uh, photo yaku, photographer and you've got your logo. But again as you guys can see the background is still a little bit distracting. So what I want to do is go back here to my background actually, which is this layer. Let's just move the group up and go to background image and turn down this opacity a bit more. Say even like 40% or so, 41, 42. That's nice. So Photo Yaku stands out way more now than before. Again, I'm going to take Photo Yaku and Photographer layer and just press Command G, put it here to text. And then I take normally all these three layers or groups actually, press command G again and just write here logo and save that. So for the client, if he's not too happy, I can just go in and change things quicker and easier. And it's also a little easier for me to find things again. So yeah, guys, as you guys can see, a super quick creation here of this logo. It's not perfect yet. I would most probably sit on this a bit more and adjust it. But yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. That's it for this week's tutorial. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like if you enjoyed this video. So thanks again, guys, for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.